I've cleared the one side of the room. So now you would work yourself back around to where you get to about here, and then you start got to clear the other side. Again, always keeping that front sight in your line of sight. Now I will tell you, I've been doing this here for three or four minutes, and you do get a little tired holding the gun in this position for three or four minutes at a time is tiring on your shoulders. So you've got to practice. If you're serious about self-defense, you're serious about using this gun tactically, this is something you really want to practice. And again, once you get around to this side, then you start to slice the room this way. Be very careful to listen for sounds from inside the room and, maybe more importantly, not to give off sound. Be very careful not to shuffle your feet so the bad guy can hear someone's there and get his gun ready. Okay? Being very aware of what's going on, any breathing, any shadows, any reflections do I see. Okay? If there's a mirror in the room, bad guy's hiding right back here, do I see the reflection? Look for reflections, movement, shadows, hear breathing, footsteps rustling of clothing, that kind of stuff. You want to be very aware. Use all your senses. Come around. Both eyes are open. Not really worried about that front sight. I'm looking right through it. Okay. Again, slowly. Slowly. Bang. Bad guy. Okay. And you, if you don't see the bad guy there, obviously you work yourself all the way around. Now, we've cleared the room, okay? Gun is high the whole time. We know now no one's on either side as far as we can see. We feel now we must enter the room for whatever reason. Let me tell you, this is one of the most dangerous things you can do. Law enforcement officers, you know, will tell you. It's just a, it's the most scary, most dangerous thing you can do in law enforcement is enter a house. You don't know where the bad guy's at. That's why they send dogs in. Okay, the dogs go first, sniff out the bad guy, scare the bad guy, then they just handcuff him. You know, they don't want to lose a dog, but they... I'd you know, rather lose a dog than have an officer go in there and have to either wrestle, confront a knife or a gun from a bad guy. So let's send the dogs in first. Now you, of course, may not have that luxury. Guns unloaded. But if you are going to enter a room, I will say to you, now that we have established there's nobody on either side, we've hide the room, we've looked as far as we can, we want to get into that room and get out of the doorway fast, okay? So we want to get in and get out, okay? Move out of that doorway. Don't stand there. Don't be a silhouette and come in here and go, okay, now what? Move right through the door. Move right into the room and try to get some kind of cover, some kind of concealment, keeping that gun at a ready position because you don't know. You may have missed something when you scan the room. You've got, that's the moment of truth there as soon as you enter that room. The 223 cartridge has the ability to go right through walls. I'm talking any interior wall in any house in America, the 223 is going to penetrate that wall and have just as much deadly force on the other side of that wall as it does on the outside of the wall. So, I'm not suggesting that you would blindly fire into a room because that makes no sense at all. You always want to identify your target. What I am suggesting is that you be very careful with where these shots end up. You don't want to miss. So with a 223 cartridge, you may want to use a soft point round versus a ball ammunition or metal jacket, full metal jacket round. They do make rounds that have a soft lead point. In fact, I believe we've got one right here. There's the difference. There's the full metal jacket. And here's the soft lead. Brian can come in here and get a close-up. you see what I'm talking about. Okay. Full metal jacket right here. Lead soft point on your left. Now, the object is, the idea here is that the soft point lead will have less penetration power than the full metal jacket, the military round. In a law enforcement or military situation, it's a totally different thing. Those guys are, are on different ends of the world. Military guys operate in a whole different world. Law enforcement is a whole different situation as well. 
They cannot fire blindly, and you as a civilian can't do that either. So um, I'm not suggesting at all that you shoot through a wall to hit a bad guy, because you don't know who that bad guy is, okay? So always try to identify your target. Now let's go ahead and load us thing up and uh, do a couple drills where we actually shoot in this room clearing, room entry exercise. Okay, here's my bad guy. And I'm going to go outside of my room, going to pie my room, and take one shot, maybe two. Let's see how accurate we can be. Again, we're looking for accuracy in this drill. That's why we're using the sweet spot theory. We go ahead and charge up. Okay, safety is on. All right, assuming that we've already clear this side of the room or this is the first side we're going to clear. Go ahead and assume the position. Sweet spot theory. Finger is pointed. Front sight up. Looking through the rear sight, right through the front sight. Both eyes are open. Okay, here we go. Now we're looking at our bad guy. Can't see anything yet. I don't know really where he's at. I know he's over there. Looking everywhere I can. Don't want to forget to look at that floor, too. Don't want to block my vision. All right, let's see what happened here. Come on in. You see what we're talking about. My shot right here. Okay. Aiming just a little high at these distances. Understanding I'm going to hit a little bit low. It's a very effective shot. Right in the mid face region, which in a sense is very effective because the rear part of the brain is located right there. So if you Follow what I was doing. Okay. Sight is all lined up. Once I see the bad guy through that sight, I'm going to squeeze my shot. Don't want to lead my feet out. I don't want to come around like this because he'll see my feet before I do. I want to make little steps. Little steps. Okay. And again, when I first saw him, I saw his gun, I took my shot, and you can see consistent accuracy. And that's what I'm looking for. And that's what you can deliver using that sweet spot theory. Consistent accuracy based upon the fact that you have a sight picture, you're looking right through the sight, as soon as you see the bad guy, you take the shot. You don't have to look at your sight again. It's already there. I, in fact, see the bad guy right through the rear sight. That is my field of view. I use my left eye for everything else. Okay? If I see any movement out there, but I am looking at the bad guy through the rear sight. Okay? That is basically my field of view, and that's how you've got to use the sweet spot theory by getting the gun up so high and it just stays there. Okay? And I see my sight picture, sight alignment, and now I'm just going to go ahead and as soon as I see the bad guy, squeeze the shot. First thing I want to show you is not really a piece of equipment, but a little bit of a American ingenuity. It's an excellent way for you to double the magazine capacity of your AR-15. Not a big secret, but something that's kind of neat. Uh, basically, I've taken two magazines and taped them together uh, in the same direction. So you can see, we basically have it in like so. When you want to make the change, release the button, out it comes, flip it around, and back it goes. Okay, just that easy. Now, one of the things I want to show you, uh, when I do that taping, what I like to try to do is take my black tape, 
start it around one of the magazines first, get a good solid hold on that one, and then match up the other magazine, and again, finish it off. So that's kind of the technique there for doubling your ammunition capacity. And uh, while we're talking about ammunition, you know, it is obviously the most important thing to have, 